The New York Empire are back in the AUDL championship game for the fourth year in a row after their dominant 10 goal win over Austin. The Salt Lake Shred made it by a much smaller margin, needing a miraculous buzzer beating deflection to make it to overtime where they narrowly prevailed over Minnesota 19-18. Tonight, it's the final test as we experience the highly anticipated rematch of their spicy Week 12 showdown when tempers flared and a rivalry began. The 2023 AUDL Championship Showdown features the New York Empire and the Salt Lake Shred next. From TCO Stadium, just outside downtown Minneapolis, Minnesota, we welcome you to the 2023 AUDL Championship game as the 13-1 Salt Lake Shred meet the undefeated 14-0 New York Empire. New York going for its second straight perfect season, its third title in the last four years. Salt Lake trying to make history of their own. Welcome, everybody. Evan Lepler with the czar of Ulti World, Charlie Eisenhood, the 2019 Coach of the Year in this league, Brian Jones. It's so great to have you with us. Let's talk about how these teams got here. The New York Empire eviscerated Austin yesterday, and we talk so much about their O-line and Ryan Osgar and Jeff Babbitt and Jack Williams. But it was the D-line that dominated yesterday, Charlie. So many different guys stepped up. It was an all-encompassing performance. This has been the number one defense in the league all season, but they took it to a new level. This was a defensive masterclass. 15 breaks on 22 takeaways. They had eight different D-line guys get blocks in this game. Antoine Davis come up with run through blocks. Josue Aloro coming up with a layout D's. They did it every way you could, schematically, one on one, in the deep space, in the reset space. Unbelievable domination from the Empire D line. They even got a record setting block, the 200th block in league history by Ryan Dross, league leader now in blocks. Everybody was involved for the Empire. Meanwhile, Salt Lake's tread had a, a much more exciting nightcap but they came from behind in the fourth quarter with, with a combination of incredible highlights, miraculous plays, and, and Jordan Kerr really set the tone early for the Salt Lake He's offense. He's a phenomenal player, an MVP candidate, the lefty. He can do it all. He can score deep. He can score. He can put it up with his breaks and his big hawks, but it took everything they had. He did it with his defense here, getting a Callahan to keep him in the game, and it was survival to the very end with this throw at the end of regulation, and it's coming up short of the end zone here. So so what does Joel Clutton do? He makes a basketball play, tips it to Elijah Jaime, sends it to overtime, and they survive. It's going to be really important for tonight. The offense has a better start, a better game against this New York Empire defense. Kerr is going to have to lead the charge. And it wasn't necessarily smooth sailing in OT against the Winchell. They were broken on their opening point, but just gregarious smiles of disbelief as they got the win. And now, for the second time in the last month and a half, they get a shot at the best ultimate team in the world. Six weeks ago tonight, the New York Empire won in Utah 23-19, but Bryce Merrill and the Shred feel like that was a good thing. They feel like they've learned from it, and they feel like tonight is their chance to change the story. The New York Empire have been on an unbelievable streak, winning two of the last three titles. They could make it three of four today. But the Salt Lake Shred have had a phenomenal season, and we've got an incredible evening of Ultimate ahead. It's the Shred and the Empire for the AUDL title coming up.
Our exclusive live coverage of the 2023 AUDL Championship game has been brought to you by Manscaped, the official grooming partner of the AUDL, the ultimate grooming experience for the ultimate athlete. Visit manscaped.com to see their full suite of grooming products today. And by B Ultimate, elevate your game with B Ultimate's premium performance-based apparel. B's cutting-edge jerseys are expertly crafted with flat lock seams and quick-dry materials that'll keep you comfortable and performing at your best no matter the conditions. Level up your game and visit shop.vultimate.com today. And by TNNS, building a better future for athletes, sports, and entertainment brands. For the New York Empire, for the third time in the last four years, New York has won 29 consecutive games. And if they win today, they would match the early Toronto Rush teams that won 30 in a row for the best winning streak in AUDL history. New York won the toss, chose to receive, and we are underway. And Salt Lake begins with a sideline roller pull. But initially, no double team look. We'll take a peek at these first matchups as Ryan Osgar gets his first touch picked up by Chad Jorgensen. It's Eugene LaRue on Elliot Chartok. And a tight window throw, but Osgar, the 2022 AUDL MVP, hits the guy that won that award the two previous seasons. Here's Charles Weinberg underneath for the New York Empire. Elliot Chartok sending this one deep. Osgar versus Jorgensen. And it's deflected to the ground after each player whiffed on it initially. However, back on the throw, there's contact as the what? head official, Blake Grundy, is bringing this disc all the way back to midfield for Chartok in the Empire. Wow. I mean, that was a pretty perfect talk for there to have been contact. So the delayed call waiting for the outcome of the play. Clutton and Yacht. This is going to be an interesting matchup. Certainly one of the reasons that Bryce Merrill recruited Clutton back onto the shred was to try and slow down Yacht and his incredible impact. Jack Williams' first touch finds Weinberg eight yards away from the goal line. With a rising stall count, Weinberg hits Ruschmeyer Bailey. The sure handed possession distributor throws the goal to Ryan Osgar. And this will be an interesting replay to check out how well, much, if any, contact was there on that puck that landed incomplete. Well, and credit to Salt Lake. They, they, they go to the roller pole early, trying to get New York kind of out of rhythm, and they force some dangerous passes there from the Empire. And we see the Huck go up here. This is the initial throw, and if, of course, if Osgard caught this, it would have been a goal, but... Jorgensen going up early kind of made Osgar think about going up early. He's able to get the block on the second effort, but it goes back on the foul on the throw. And then they're able to work it across the face and get it to Osgar at the front. It's already tough enough to get a block in the Empire and to get one and have it be called back. Jorgensen almost comes up with a second one in that point. It's going to take everything. They're going to have to pull out all the stops. That roller pull early without the double team is a nice, interesting wrinkle. And you can't just stick to one game plan against New York because they're going to figure it out. They're too good. Every three points is going to require a shift defensively. One of the big question marks today for Salt Lake was Sean Canole, who left the game in the third quarter yesterday with concussion symptoms, but he's good to go today. Talked to Sean earlier today. He seemed to be all right. Jeff Babbitt was also questionable for the Empire, but he's out there on the first deep point against this Salt Lake O-line that was the number one efficiency team in the league during the regular season, but not last night against Minnesota. The windchill took them out of their game. There were some uncharacteristic mistakes. A lot of nerves. First championship weekend for a lot of these players. Antoine Davis on Jordan Kerr. What a battle so far. Antoine Davis has been on a tear the last half of the season. Oh. And Canole with the butterfingers on the opening possession, giving the break chance to New York. Those are the ones you just can't have if you're Salt Lake. I think this is the dangerous time, this first part of the game. You won a miraculous victory last night if you're Salt Lake. 
We got a whistle and it's a timeout from the Empire sideline as Charlie Hoppus flew through the flag as the stall count timeout. rose on Ben Katz. Their first shot timeout of the half. New York got the early hold, a curious call perhaps. We'll take a look after we come back. Empire with a chance to take the early 2-0 lead on Salt Lake here in the 2023 AUDL Championship game. My first few years of college, I threw every single day. Of course you want to be a champion. Of course you want to be working towards winning titles. Be happy, but never satisfied. Bryce Merrill has been a transformative figure in Utah Ultimate over the past decade plus. And he's been a co-owner and head coach of the Salt Lake team since day one. First throw out of the timeout. Elliot Chartok with a perfect put. Jack Williams runs it down. And the Empire take the early 2-0 lead. Total deja vu from their first matchup. Out of timeout situation. Jack Williams to the deep space one on one. They hit it immediately. And at the time it was bad here, championship game. It's even worse. Two nothing Empire. Jack likes to get going deep early on, especially in these big moments. And it looked like in the timeout, they had some extra time to chat to each to each other. And I'm not sure that's exactly the play they drew up, but when it's Jack Williams going deep with that many steps. And Elliot Chartok has been on a tear lately with these Hawks, especially going in this direction. It's a swirling wind. It's not that heavy, but a great throw and catch. It all comes off of the Sean Canole drop. Salt Lake struggled yesterday with turnovers that they had not seen much during the regular season. A lot of unforced errors and still again today. And another drop from Sean Canole, and you got to wonder if that might be it for him tonight. That's a catastrophic start for the Salt Lake Shred center handler. Unbelievable. Antoine Davis guarded by Jordan Kerr, and he throws into a poach. McKay Jorgensen stayed in the lane and gets the huge turning point block for Salt Lake. Excellent anticipation of where the but attack this is going to be a go. Callahan for Ryan Drost. No whistles other than the score. It's his second Callahan at championship weekend. His 201st career block in New York leads 3 nothing. Bryce Merrill earlier today told us that they just needed to survive the first six minutes of this game. And right now they're not surviving. It has been all bad for the shred. And you got to think about a timeout if you're Bryce Merrill at this point. What are the answers? I think you have to play through it a little bit. But you that's a tough decision with Sean Canole. You talked about it a little bit, alluded to it. He might be done for the day. He had an injury last game, was a questionable going into this game. It's hard because you want to compete. You want to be in this moment. But then sometimes you can squeeze, be squeezing things just a little bit too tight. And it's the nightmare scenario. It's tough after you have survived. Your season appeared to be over until the Joel Clutton tip disc that sent you to overtime and gave you new life. It's tough to recover the next day and play. You can't just be thankful to be here if you're Salt Lake. If you want to win this game, and this is not the start they wanted. Well, there's a ton of game remaining. And there's one person with really big game experience picking up the disc, Grant Lindsley, the last time he played in a championship game. Had one of the best games of all time, nearly 800 yards of offense, receiving and throwing combined for the New York Empire in 2019. Babbitt out there on Dunabile, and he's looking deep, testing Marquez Brownlee, and that is questionable. Brownlee comes up with a huge early block in the end zone for New York. And it's another break chance as this Empire break train has already left the station. That throw felt desperate. Babbitt makes the adjustment. 
That's his first completion of championship weekend after scoring six goals yesterday. Ethan Fortin overthrows Brownlee. Marquez looking at the official who's shaking his head no. There was contact, but it, I think I like the no call there. It was hard to see. I mean, Marquez can be so good in the air. We just saw him rip down a block. Just every completion right now for the shred is difficult. And Babbitt with the pressure, a low throw, never had a chance. Great field position for Katz in New York. Davis comes to the disc and got undercut. An apologetic McKay Jorgensen immediately showing that he was not intentionally clipping him. Davis for John Randolph. Yesterday, every single member of New York's active 20 had a block, a goal, or an assist. The depth of this team is just unbelievable. Bryce Merrill was calling for a travel, and he's not going to like the call. It's contact on the defender, and Randolph will be able to center the disc on the goal line. Former national champion in the college division with Brown University and an easy assist to Ben Katz. It's 4-0 Empire. The nightmare continues for the shred. The reset pressure from New York has been immense. Every single pass that they normally get off easily has resulted in bad throws and turnovers. Let's see the Callahan. I mean, the pressure got them rattled early in this game. Then they're trying to huck out of it. Attacking Marquez Brownlee is not the solution. And everything is wrong right now for Salt Lake. New York's defense has been suffocating without a doubt. But that's still not accounting for all of these unforced errors coming into this game. And that's the worry. Like I said, last night you survive. It's a miracle. You're just thankful to be here. And you're going up against the juggernaut. This is the best team in AUDL history with the most defensive depth you're going to see. And on top of that, New York played them earlier this season, a regular season game that they won on the road. And they've had the time to make the slight adjustments to slow down the Salt Lake offense. I better see some defense. I better see bodies on the mark, cuts off lines, and I want to see us moving that disc. Okay? Yes, sir. Fix it now. We got a long These time are to highlights go. from the meeting in mid July when Jace Dunabile had five goals and five assists. And while the Shred never held a lead in the game after falling behind 2 0, they kept it close. They were within two in the fourth quarter. Obviously, this is where the tempers flared. Ben Yacht was controversially ejected from the game after spiking the disc three different times at the shred sideline and then Bryce Merrill used the AUDL's integrity rule to bring Yacht back into the game. This highlight from Dunabaya, one of his great plays of the night. The shred hung around and they gained confidence from that game, Charlie. They really did. Yeah, I think that's why they were seen as the team expected to face New York here in the final and be the best matchup for New York. They have to settle in. They need a hold so bad right now just to give themselves some confidence again. Yeah, really just won anything here. Will Selfridge, guy who kind of epitomizes the youth of this Salt Lake team. These are very different teams in the way they're orchestrated, but my goodness. Oh, Kerr snatches what looked like a sure interception. Lindsley with a Loro bouncing on the mark to Miller. Elijah Jaime was wearing his old Atlanta Hustle jersey in the Salt Lake locker room last night after the win. And Salt Lake is on the board as Selfridge connects with Jaime. And here was the key for Salt Lake. They started to use New York's aggression in the reset space against them, throwing fakes juking towards the, the backwards reset and when New York's defenders would fly through they got the motion back upfield and it made for some easier completions you see more fakes attacking throwing and and pulling the defender into that space underneath allows them to go over the top 
They're going to need more of that because New York came out ultra aggressive on the marks and on the resets. Bryce Merrill talked about playing at the pace provided. That's been a mantra for this team. And they love to move it fast. And it's hard when a defense is keyed in on it. Like you talked about, you have to start using those pump fakes, using your eyes to get the defenders to jump into the lanes and then know to go to a different direction. And it takes some time. It takes a few points, but that's a great start for the Salt Lake O-line to get back on track. Now it's the first look at the New York O-line in quite a while. They held on the first point after a foul call, and we're going to still get back to that replay because it's not clear how much contact there was and whether it really should have been a foul called on Eugene LaRue against Elliott Chartok. And if that wasn't called, Salt Lake would have had a break chance in the first point of the game. It feels like ages ago. Elliot Chartok and Solomon Rushmeyer Bailey have been so steady in the backfield for New York. Osgar looking for Yacht, testing Clutton, and Yacht rises up to snag the perfect toss from Ryan Osgar. No spikes from Ben, but some friendly kisses for the guy who fashions himself the villain. Like him or hate him, he's one of the best players in the world. Empire lead 5-1. New York leading five to one first quarter of the AUDL championship game. Elliot Chartok nearly had an early turnover for the second straight day, but today it was called back because of a foul. This was the very first point of the game with Gene LaRue on the mark. Charlie, Brian, did you think this was a foul? Well, it looked like a perfectly clean hook out of the hands. I, I couldn't even believe there had been a whistle. And we see it again here, setting the mark and maybe the lightest contact on the hip, but I think it's sold there by Chartok. I do not see a foul fortunate for the Empire. Yeah, I don't think it's a foul call that you normally are going to see. I don't think it should have been called right there. It looked like the throw was exactly what they wanted. It's going to hang in that direction. We saw that yesterday into the wind, and it was a hanging throw that was blocked, but those are the way the wind blows sometimes. After that uh, hold, three straight breaks, two of them preceded by Sean Canole drops. Canole is out there on offense, and it's not Canole making the mistake, but Miller misfiring, looking for Jaime. So far, almost everything that could go wrong has gone wrong for the West Division champs. Pick down field on New York and Fortin will march back to free 10. It almost feels like New York's reputation precedes them. A lot of overthrows from Salt Lake trying to avoid defenders on the trail side. Katz throws through the double team. Randolph needs a reset, gets it to Fortin. For a long time, Ethan Fortin was Philadelphia's best player going every other high volume handler and now he's leading the D line offense. Breton Tan. One of the newcomers on this New York team makes it six to one. Ah, just a misfire. And these all these short fields are just making it easy for the Empire D line. And we're seeing more resistance from Salt Lake's offense than we saw yesterday from the Austin Soul, but it hasn't been enough. It's just too many turnovers from Salt Lake. Already six in the game. Randolph and Tan, two of the youngest members of this Empire team. They're two of the three players that are 25 or under on this New York roster. Of course, Salt Lake has 10 of their 20 active players are 25 or under. So there's different generations represented. 11 of New York's 20 or 29 or older. A lot of experience in that New York squad. That's one way to look at it. Sean Canole, can he 
rinse off the early mistakes and rediscover his game. Yikes. Chad Jorgensen. Of course, we're all going to remember the Joel Clutton tip to Elijah Jaime, but it was Chad Jorgensen that launched that throw with about five, six seconds to go. Salt Lake trailing Minnesota by one. The windchill thought they had it, and they so nearly did. Another difficult leaping catch made by Chad Jorgensen, who shoots it deep. Joel Clutton is there. Chad Jorgensen giving Salt Lake a boost. Had no fear on that throw, but Salt Lake's lucky they didn't turn it over on the previous throw. It has not been smooth sailing whatsoever for this O-line. But maybe using the Hucks will open some things up for them. They've had more success there than in the reset space, that's for sure. Well, right now, it's just about getting confidence. It's hard in these moments when everything seems like it's going wrong and you're barely surviving, making a catch like that. But you just need to get into a rhythm. It's hard to do that against this New York defense. The marks are difficult. They're taking away a lot of options. And one of the adjustments they made from the last game is the way they play hand their defense against the Salt Lake team. This Salt Lake team likes to throw to space. They like to take advantage of being face guarded, throwing out little dishy passes. And as a result, their rhythm is slowed down. And Salt Lake is playing a little bit unnaturally, and it's going to take some time for them to recover. Last year's championship weekend MVP Jack Williams dishes to Ben Yacht. So many members of this New York O-line have flowery accolades that you could talk about as they receive the disc. John Lithio, one of the underrated pieces, but he's showing his distribution skills as well. Last year it was Charles Weinberg hucking to John Lithio at championship weekend. Now we see the reverse, and it's Ruschmeyer Bailey to Benyat to finish the easy empire hold. No turnovers yet for the New York offense. And keep in mind, when Salt Lake saw the empire last time, New York was on the second game of a back-to-back -back on a difficult doubleheader road trip at altitude. They were not seeing New York fresh. And New York is about as fresh as you can be after playing a semifinal yesterday very comfortable win against Austin and meanwhile Salt Lake had a really tough grinding game against Minnesota that goes to OT late into the night there's a, just an energy differential right now and you can see it part of its energy part of its the New York defense and part of its just the inexperience of this type of moment and being able to play through it this has been a banner year for Salt Lake this team has transformed them, transformed themselves. The identity from what it was a year ago when they were really high risk taking offense, now being more patient, but it's hard to do it in these moments of pressure. The windows are tighter. Grant Lindsley marked by Brett and Tan. Final 30 seconds of the half, and it's another break chance coming after Tan gets a piece of the Lindsley backhand. That's incredible. Ben Katz is taking this time, but he might want to move it a little bit faster. Guess wow. not. Jeff Babbitt doesn't matter. Jeff Babbitt with his first goal of the night. It's the only thing we hadn't seen so far for New York. My goodness. I mean, this, this is on pace to be a, a bigger blowout in the first quarter than we saw yesterday with New York crushing the Austin Soul. Play a little better. Let's go for you. Jeff Babbitt Let's go. at the front cone where he has lived all season. Just incredible. Brett and Tan, what an off-season addition to get even better for the Empire. And Jeff Babbitt, after an incredible regular season in which he scored 50 goals, named the midseason MVP. He might very well be named MVP in the weeks ahead. He got to sit out most of the game yesterday after coming in. Played seven points, scored six goals, yeah. and then took his cleats off. And and he said he wasn't feeling great. It was a combination of the score and his situation, still dealing with lingering concussion symptoms now. He's not out here for the end of quarter situation. He normally would be. Yeah, it's a little surprising. Canole will initiate 13 and a half seconds here for the shred. 
Salt Lake will receive to start the second quarter. Clock starts on the first release. Lindsley angles a backhand. Clutton versus Yacht. Clutton. Oh, he had it and he lost it. And he's begging for a foul. And Ben Yacht looked like he contemplated maybe using the integrity rule, perhaps, but he's suggesting that there was no contact. This is interesting. There's no call, and it's the end of the first. Joel Clutton appearing to call for a strip. Everyone can look at the big board here as we go to break. It's 8-2. New York at the end of one. Clutton had it. He just couldn't hang on, and that did not look like a foul. I don't think he stopped rotation. Ben Yacht playing good defense. Clutton can't hang on. New York, 8-2. Welcome back to Championship Weekend here at TCO Stadium in Minnesota. And we have just witnessed another dominant first quarter for the New York Empire. You add in the 7-3 first quarter win yesterday, and it's 15-5 for New York and their pair of first quarters against Austin and Salt Lake here this weekend. Austin gave a glimmer of hope going up 2-0 yesterday, but for Salt Lake, it's been straight downhill. Another bobble from Canole. Hangs on this time with Brownlee on the mark. Difficult reset with Aloro on Lindsley. Miller to the middle for Kerr. Lindsley thinking about it. I thought it was interesting how New York was somewhat comparing Salt Lake's offense to what D.C. does. And Brian, you made that comparison as well. Why? They like to move it with such pace. They're a team that really goes through progressions fast. They don't stick with one player for too long, and they keep the disc moving. And good thing for New York, they have the experience against a lot of top teams, including this Salt Lake squad. But they have been really been built for D.C. over the years because that is the team they have to beat to get out of the East. And so you see off-season additions like Tan. You see Josue Aloro come back. Shankalotti. New York offensively had just four turnovers against the Breeze in the East Division Final, the cleanest offensive game in the history of the league. Austin Soul head coach Steven Naji talking last night about their game with New York, said, we, we, we got 17 turns from them. I mean, we got to be pleased about that. The problem was the Soul had 28 turns and were never really in the game after the opening seven minutes. Well, a little bit more patient. Offense from Salt Lake pays off. It took nearly two minutes, but they've got a clean hold. Uh, they had to finally get some of those trickier break throws off to keep the offense flowing. You know, a lot they've been looking back to kind of just go into their reset system, but New York's been playing so aggressively in the backfield that the way to open things up is either to attack the deep space or to attack the break side and that's what they did on this point and Jacob Miller gets away from Drost kind of blown coverage there in the end zone and that's what's going to take against New York it's not going to be easy you're not going to be able to score at will do it quickly do it in the way that you always want to and that's why it takes a veteran presence in Grant Lindsley to be in the backfield and sometimes go every other for a little bit just to establish rhythm, establish that confidence. They're a young team still. Despite their great season, they have to learn through these moments. Opportunity here for Salt Lake defensively. The pull mishandled on the receiving by Elliott Chartok. So the Empire begin from the back of the end zone. Ruschmeyer Bailey 
With a good fake. Chartok moving with him. These two just get better and better. Rushmeyer Bailey and Chartok. It's one of those things where in the presence of such superstars like Oscar and Yad and Williams, these two, they're so steady. Contact on the mark. And they just always know where to be. They know where to look. They don't have any hesitation. And the chemistry they have with this offense is incredible. Weinberg. Some contact. Williams asking for a foul. And didn't get a whistle. And Selfridge helps to usher the throw away. Great chance here for Salt Lake. I will say, even though Salt Lake was down more at the end of the first than Austin was yesterday, feels like they're closer in the game than the Soul were at the end of the first in a weird way. Well, their offense has been actually able to move up the field. Can their D-line convert? at a rate similar to what Austin's did, because Austin's D-line was their strength yesterday. Chad Jorgensen looking to the end zone, and he connects with Kyle Weinberg. A the glimmer. first break of the night for the shred. A glimmer of hope for Salt Lake. The first turn of the night for the New York offense, and it is immediately converted into a break by the shred. Great cross-field shot. And you're back within striking distance, four back. Building that confidence and maybe getting one back from the refs because that's a bizarre no call. Weinberg lays into Jack Williams. And there's no contact call here. And they've been calling contact for the slightest co physicality on the mark. And yet, they let this one go. Jack throws the turnover afterwards. And this D-line offense, give them credit, they know how to move the ball. They move it with pace. They know how to find the open hands. It's a very simple offense, but effective. Kyle Weinberg and Charles Weinberg were teammates at the University of Delaware going head to head here today. Don't believe they're related. We already have enough brothers in this game. We got the Jorgensen's, all three of them. We got a couple Hoffmans, two Dross, two Chartoks, a partridge and a pear tree. Charles Weinberg, that throw deflected on the mark. It's another break chance for Salt Lake. Interesting to see that Salt Lake is getting its pressure at the point of attack on the mark, both of their blocks. And I think that was Ben Hoffman who was inactive yesterday got banged up in the playoff game against L.A. in the West final. So it's Ben Hoffman's 2023 playoff debut here in the final and he gets a piece of the Empire throw and don't look now but Salt Lake trying to make this a game 7 11 to play in the second another chance coming up for the shred. My first few years of college I threw every single day. Of course you want to be a champion. Of course you want to be working towards winning titles. Be happy, but never satisfied. Better than ever. Ben Hoffman turned 24 earlier this week. He was the all-time scorer at College Nationals in 2022 for Utah State. And his block on Charles Weinberg there gives Salt Lake a chance here to get back within three. Back-to-back -back hand blocks for the shred. Now the O-line out there trying to get them back within three. A lot of hand blocks so far in this championship game. Great marks by both teams. A lot of defensive pressure. First by New York, Brett and Tan earlier on Grant Lindsley.
Tan almost got another one on Lindsley, but he sees Kerr over the top. Davis makes up the ground, deflects it in the air, and then deflects it again. Antoine Davis gets his 10th block in the last six games of this season. He has been phenomenal. And look how much ground he makes up on Kerr. Great speed to make up the distance, and he's been an offensive player for a long time, and the last couple of years has transformed himself defensively, and just lately the last few months, it's been incredible. Becoming the player that's so dominant. Marquez Brownlee shoots it into a double team, and Lindsley anticipated it. Earning possession back for Salt Lake. I think one of the things the Salt Lake offense has to work through is that they've been letting the New York Empire poach the lane from the handler space a lot. A lot of hands in the cookie jar, so to speak. Making the windows tighter. They like to use these inside passes, go through the middle of the field, and a lot of defenders can squeeze that lane. Lindsley was going deep on Tan, but Jaime is not the guy to throw it. Will Selfridge. McKay Jorgensen. To his brother Chad. And now Jordan Kerr. Kind of a subtle double team from behind by Brownlee. And now sets it again on Chad Jorgensen, floating it into trouble, and Brett Tan has his second block of the half. Amazing red zone defense from New York on both of these possessions for Salt Lake's O-line, although, of course, this was a break chance. And it's the third try for the Empire to get a hold on this particular point. It was 8-2 New York at the end of the first. Can you believe the Empire have not scored in the second quarter? And they're still up by four. Tan to Randolph. Hoppus holding the timeout. He's he's making his defense work it through, tiring out the Salt Lake O-line. Normally, I think you'd see Hoppus earlier in games this year. He would have called this timeout uh, already, put the offense on the field, convert the break. He's standing right next to Jonathan Monforti, the official on the sideline, but he's watching his normal D line shred the shred. Randolph, a guy who's played a lot of offense of his life. He broke into the league as an 18 year old handler for the Seattle Cascades when he was still in high school. Ben Katz, such a playmaker, finds Jeff Babbitt. It's the second goal for Babbitt. It's the second assist for Katz. And whereas the shred could have inched within three, New York back up by five. Antoine coming up with the big play. And then the red zone defense forcing the dangerous pass into traffic. It's knocked away by Tan. And then Katz. Pump fakes, Babbitt comes back the other side, burns a defender, some words, New York up five. Jeff Babbitt now with eight goals for the Empire at Championship Weekend. 58 goals on the season. And of course, he missed the East Division final due to lingering concussion symptoms. But he's back, and it's a 9 4 lead for New York. That last Babbitt goal was their first goal of the second quarter. Took them over eight and a half minutes, and yet they still have a five goal lead. Some new personnel out in the field for Salt Lake. 
Joel Clutton downfield. And a little bit of a different look. Changing the spacing. Canole with a flick laser misplayed by Davis. Clutton has it. Floats it to space for Lindsley. Uh, that's more like it conversion for the shred. Yeah, you get the shot to Clutton, and then you get Lindsley out in space using his speed. That's more what you want to see. I mean, they kind of had to force Grant back into a, a handler role. It's not been ideal, but with, you know, Canole a little bit limited and needing a veteran presence touching the disc a lot, we've seen that. But I think this is more what the shred would like to see. You want to get some quick points. And they've been a lot better in this second quarter, that's for sure. There's just something about Clutton with the poise he's had this weekend. He's not afraid at all. There's no yips. There's just very experienced. He's made some incredible plays and then some ordinary plays. And they've needed that. All the Austin Soul guys were cheering for Joel Clutton last night because, of course, Joel went to the University of Texas, played for Dallas and Austin previously. Great mark by Muonga. And Elliot Chartok. <laughs> the defensive intensity has been there for Salt Lake. Yeah, but there's something to be said about this New York's New York team's ability to withstand that defensive intensity. Just another factor that defensive depth practices a battle every single week. They get better. The iron sharpens the iron. Lithio sees Oscar under. Chad Jorgensen right there with him in his pocket. The Empire are so good at always finding that release valve. Working together, and Oscar wants Yacht again. It goes over both Johnny Hoffman and Ben Yacht's head. Hoffman was totally out of position. Yacht just misplayed it because Hoffman went up so early. Yacht was already pretty deep, and Osgar usually has the power to get it there, but not his best throw. A little bit of a no-look pass. Big puck testing Yacht, and Hoffman has it. The Shredder out of timeouts, and Hoffman turfs the backhand. Just too creative, didn't need it. It maybe he felt the pressure of the stall count with nobody around to help him out. Oh, Maonga! And then, wow! Ben Hoffman with a layout on the verge of some greatness being conserved, but Maonga helped out by the bid from Hoffman and the Shredder within three. They may be back. They might be coming. And the belief will start to come back into the team. They're able to weather through this initial pummeling from New York. And then Mwanga with the best layout D of the weekend, maybe. And Hoffman delivering on the other end to get them back within three. And all of a sudden, it feels like the shred have a little mojo back. I love that he just let it rip. He said, ah, I like this throw. I'm going to be athletic. I'm going to be young. Let me put it out to space. Hoffman goes and gets it. The D-line's playing with confidence. They've had it all game long. But here's the scary part right now. You're within three. This is great. The Empire have shown at the end of quarters, they could put up two to three scores right now and splits you out of the game. And so for all of the great work they've done getting back into this one, if they can find a way to hold, this would feel like a monumental victory. For Salt Lake. They were down as many as six, and yet it's now a three goal game. New York did take the timeout to reset things for their offense. You know, one thing with the New York domination of Austin yesterday that didn't get talked about that much is that the O line didn't have that good of a game. I mean, they gave up the opening breaks, ended up getting broken something like four or five times before the very end of the game when the defensive line was playing O points, but it, it wasn't a great performance. 
And we're seeing once again, both of these O-lines from Salt Lake and New York have struggled. It's a windy, swirly stadium. The poles have been good. And the defensive pressure, the marks by both teams. Grant Lindsay out here playing defense. It's an important point. Joel Clutton on Ben Yacht. We've already seen that matchup a couple times. Jack Williams with a disc. Whether this game is two, three, or four goals at the end of the half, it's going to feel monumentally different. Certainly the Shred are going to win this second quarter after getting bludgeoned in the first. But they have not been knocked out. Osgar to Yacht with eight seconds. Jack Williams has been the buzzer beating thrower. There's no Jeff Babbitt on the field and Clutton again is the big man in the end zone for Salt Lake. No fly zone for Joel Clutton and he wins this end of quarter situation and Salt Lake down six at the end of the first cuts the deficit in half here by halftime. Empire scored one goal in 12 minutes in that second quarter. Joel Clutton's been the MVP of the first half, keeping Salt Lake in the game with some clutch catches, clutch skies, another one to end the quarter. Salt Lake has some life. They sure do, Brian. Empire looking to go back to back, win their third title in four years. They've got a three goal lead in the half here in the title game. Championship Halftime Show presented by Launch Hydrate, an official partner of the American Ultimate Disc League. A tale of two quarters here in our championship matchup between the New York Empire and Salt Lake Shred. New York wins the first quarter 8-2. The Salt Lake Shred come back and win the second quarter 4-1, and we've got ourselves a three-goal game here at halftime. Ian Toner joined by Colorado Summit star Alex Atkins, Atlanta Hustle coach Tuba Benson Jaja, and former Madison Radicals champ Colin Camp. Gentlemen, it looked like New York was going to run away with this, but let's take a look at the highlights because we had a little bit of a comeback there from the Salt Lake Shred in the second quarter. The first quarter here was all New York, though. Yeah, it was all New York, but what we know is it's a game of runs, right? So New York came out early, went up with a very early lead early in the game, was connecting on a lot of pieces. Their defense converted early. Um, I think they're 4 of 12 or 4 of 10 right now in conversions. And then Salt Lake was able to stabilize going into the second quarter, made their own run, and now have it as a three-point game. And really what it was in the first quarter is Salt Lake had just a few flat-out drops. I mean, we're not talking contested catches. We're just talking about stone-cold drops. So, I mean, I think, it, but again, and again, it showed that New York really isn't invincible. Like, the 4-1 to comeback was fantastic for Salt Lake. It gives me hope that this game maybe can at least be exciting till sometime in the fourth quarter, and I think you'd love to see that as a fan. Yeah, and I think Salt Lake really ramped up their defensive effort in that second quarter, made things a little bit uglier. Obviously, you see New York only scoring one goal. That's a big win for that Salt Lake defense. You see the disparity between these squads. Salt Lake holding four of 10, New York holding four of six. Salt Lake only breaking one of six, or one of five, and New York breaking four of six. New York's just making the most of its opportunities. Their star power is showing. As we look ahead to this second half, how can Salt Lake start to claw back even closer and make this three goal deficit smaller? Yeah, I mean, for me, it's more the second quarter all again, right? I think, like I mentioned before, Salt Lake ramped up that defensive pressure and made throws a little more difficult. As we you know, talked about in the pregame show, the wind has picked up. It's a little bit chilly. And those are the exact elements right now that Salt Lake started using in the second quarter, and it worked to their advantage. So you got to keep hoping that New York's going to make some of those mistakes, but you got to keep that defensive pressure up in order to force some of those mistakes. Alex, you're an O-line guy. If your teammates are having some struggles, maybe be unforced errors. How do you get these guys to regain their confidence? That's a tough one because sometimes it's out of your control. You know, I mean, I think you'd love to go up and be like, hey, man, you got it. Like, you, 
like you don't, you don't normally do that. I don't know, but like at a certain point, like they got to get themselves out of that slump. I think it's great if a coach, a leader, can go up to them. Hey, we believe in you. You got this. You you, you got to do what you keep doing. But at the end of the day, they got to dig themselves out of that hole. So Tuba, you've coached in many a playoff battle. If you're in the huddle in Bryce Merrill's position, what are you saying to this Salt Lake Shred squad to try and motivate it here? Well, what I'm pointing at the second quarter, they they really stabilized on the second quarter. We're able to punch several several in, went on a run of their own, and we're only down by three. By the way, we've been playing the way they've been playing. It feels like they should be down by more. So they've got a little bit of confidence they can use in that third quarter. Rely on our fundamentals. We're right where we need to be, and and if they stay in striking distance, we know that championship playoff games, anything can happen. Anybody want to change their picks from our pregame selection where we all picked the New York Empire to capture their third title in franchise history? I'm bold, but I'm not crazy. I'm sticking with New York. Tuba? Yeah, I'm staying with New York. They're, they're going to win by six or more. Yeah, of course, New York, but I, I got to say, my, my score prediction is looking pretty good. Remind us what your score prediction was. 1915. The wind definitely keeping things a lot calmer here today. TCO Bank Stadium, plenty of action still to go here in Minnesota. Don't forget to tune in to the rest of the second half right here on Fox Sports 2. My first few years of college, I threw every single day. Of course you want to be a champion. Of course you want to be working towards winning titles. Be happy, but never satisfied. Back here in Minnesota, it's halftime of the 2023 AUDL Championship game. The New York Empire in front 9-6, to six, but Salt Lake with the momentum after getting back-to-back -back breaks in this second quarter to cut a six-goal deficit in half. Third quarter action coming up here shortly from TCO Stadium. Beautiful evening here in the Twin Cities as we welcome you back to TCO Stadium. The New York Empire leading the Salt Lake Shred 9 to 6 in the 2023 AUDL Championship game. Welcome back to our broadcast booth, everybody, as we get set for the start of the third quarter with Brian Jones and Charlie Eisenhood. I'm Evan Lepler. Bryce Merrill and the Shred were down six at the end of the first. They needed to make up that deficit. They had three quarters to do it. So I guess technically they're ahead of schedule by making up three of the six goals in the second to make it a three goal game. I mean totally different game in that second quarter and we were talking at halftime that it kind of feels like it's been even even though of course New York is up three. I mean that's what the onslaught was at the beginning of this game with the drops and the miscues Salt Lake just never getting it going in the first quarter. But they bounce back. They outscore New York four to one. They cut the deficit in half. And hey, I mean, it feels like they're in it. And that is exactly right. And this offense for Salt Lake is like an Indy 500 car trying to go drive on perfect pavement. But against New York, they need the off-road vehicle because the offensive possessions were bumpy and they've been slowed down. But they're figuring out taking the dirt road requires some patience, navigating the potholes. And the offense has found a little bit of a groove. And that's going to be vital going forward is you're going to face tough defensive pressure. You've been giving great defensive pressure. Belief can start to come back. You're getting comfortable with it. That's what it's like playing against this great New York team. They're going to need it going forward to have all that confidence, all that will, all that belief. And this is a very interesting O point to start this third quarter for the New York Empire, especially after how shaky they were in the second. Definitely, you know, they, they come out and really never look great on a single O point the entire time. I mean, they they gave on the one that they got the hold. They gave it away twice. Salt Lake took the timeout, got their O line onto the field and couldn't convert with two chances. But 
you know, so New York eventually able to, to get the hold, but they don't have a very good end of quarter possession. Nothing was right in that second quarter, but I think a chance at halftime to refocus and say, hey, this game is not over. This is not this Austin Soul team that had no chance to run with us. Salt Lake can run with us. We have to play better. We'll see what happens here on this first point of the second half. Eugene LaRue, one of three members of the 2021 Boston Glory team that's playing in this game today with the pull to begin this third quarter. Well, Austin, all the chaos yesterday was that Austin defense actually played pretty well. They had some great strategies to gunk up the pole plays. The New York offense eventually figured it out. And they will here, too. That's one of the hardest things about going up against this offense is you can build great pressure, and they're used to dealing with it. You can feel and you can see the skip to Salt Lake's collective step defensively. But will it be enough to thwart the Empire attack? Going in this direction, the Hucks have hung, and Dole Clutton is playing very aggressive in Menyot. Determined to force him out. You rarely see that. Last time it happened was the divisional championship game in Ben Yacht and nearly 800 yards of offense. Williams resets for Weinberg. Slices across and Will Selfridge with some pretty good defense on Jack Williams. You think he's excited? The young buck to go up against some of the Best players in the game. And the Empire take a timeout. Wow. Salt Lake sideline celebrates. I mean, glacial pace from the Empire. They're used to winning these one-on-one -on -one ISO cuts and just kind of rolling down the field. Before the timeout, we'll walk up 10 yards. Timeout, New York. Okay, so a pick coming right before they blew the whistle for the timeout. So a 10-yard penalty yeah. coming for New York. Jack Williams was trying to argue that the Empire now don't want the timeout. New York, the but they have called the timeout almost simultaneous with a pick call. It's a nice try because, look, these timeouts are valuable. And now the Empire have one left for a, a long second half ahead. That's right. But in this situation, when you don't like what you see, rather than give up the turnover, it's, it feels like an important point. They've slowed things down. New York has been working through, being patient. We're going to listen in in the huddle. This is the greatness of this offensive team. They work together. They solve problems together. Jack talked about it in the press conference. This is the best offensive unit he's been a part of, and he's been a part of some great offensive units. The chemistry they have, they keep trying to get better. You, you won't ever hear a D-line huddle chanting patience after a, after a conversation. All right, well, Ben Yacht's wide open now. Clutton just left him. Lithio underneath with Terry on the mark. Aggressive, no reset mark. New York's been double clutching before deciding to not throw these huck attempts. And they're going into the wind where this is hung all weekend long. And it just makes offense that hard, that much harder. Yacht for Williams. Contested reset. Ruschmeyer Bailey bumped by McKay Jorgensen. Jorgensen seems like he can't believe the call, but a little hand checking. Refs aren't going to let that happen. Good defense downfield by Chad Jorgensen and Oscar, but now Oscar's open on the other sideline. Looking for Williams. That's just an impossible throw to stop without an extra help defender in the backfield. And when you're in the red zone, New York able to calmly convert. It took more than two and a half minutes off the third quarter clock. But the Empire have equaled their second quarter scoring, scoring earlier in the third. Some good things for both teams there. New York burns clock. They're up. They're happy to take time off the clock right now with a four-goal lead. On the other hand, Salt Lake gets New York to burn a timeout from the field, something you almost never see. 
We saw it yesterday a couple of times. Some timeouts taken. And not using the sub on new players. Just to regroup and figure it out. It's been tough sledding, and that's great defense versus great offense. And when great offense meets great defense, great offense usually wins. Certainly the patience mantra working out for New York. I think they're just afraid right now to throw it that direction deep. They're double clutching, and that's making the possessions harder than they need to be. Now can Salt Lake's offense have a drama-free possession? Babbitt on Dunabile, back to Canole. Looking long, Kerr chased by Davis. The crowd looming, Davis rises up over the top and gets the huge block. That's just not a favorable matchup for Salt Lake. Jordan Kerr is a great player, but Davis just too good in the air. Tumbling catch made by Ethan Fortin. Bumped by Canole. Resets for Randolph. Continues for Katz. Seeing the poach. Katz finds Brownlee. Katz stumbles, but able to recalibrate. A little push pass for Randolph. Up the line. Marquez Brownlee. And it's Brenton Tan with a score. Better looking offense from the D-line for New York than from the O-line. What a great point for this D-line coming out to start the second half. The big huck goes up into double coverage. And it's all Davis. Look how early he goes up. Little contact on Kerr, no whistle. Should that have been a foul? There was some contact, and that's kind of a weird one. I wouldn't have been surprised by a call. When the defensive player gets that high up in the air and makes the block first before the contact affects the offensive player, I don't think you should blow a whistle there. So Davis continuing to have a huge impact for this New York team. I mean, he's been one of the best players for the Empire this weekend, Is he without a doubt. championship weekend MVP favorite right now? I mean, right now, you got to give it to somebody on the D-line. They may played more points in the offense. I mean, Jeff Babbitt had an incredible stat line yesterday. And just at one half of play, the amount of goals he scored at a rapid pace. Deep shot going up, looking for Clutton. Mike Dross peeled off, and Clutton skies a pair of Empire. And he also got fouled. Mike Dross and Jeff Holm not big enough to stop Joel Clutton. And we got another contact call on the mark. Resets the stall count. Clutton looking. Clutton scubering. Salt Lake scoring. Four goal game. Joel Clutton has been a monster. He really has. He's one of the only things keeping Salt Lake in this game is his playmaking ability, both on the offensive side and defensive side. A couple of skies. Media now another one. So if Antoine Davis is the Empire's top championship weekend MVP candidate, if we know who it is for Salt Lake, Joel Clutton comes up with a big sky and then throws the assist. Four goal game, New York on offense when we come back. Solomon Ruschmeyer, Bailey, John Lithio, Charles Weinberg, Ryan Osgar, Jack Williams, Ben Yacht, and Elliot Chartok. The New York Empire offensive line. That's receiving in a four goal game, five minutes into this third period. New York won its first title in 2019, taking down the Dallas Roughnecks. 
They lost in the championship game in their next opportunity after the pandemic in 2021. Osgar, deep ball, Ben Yacht. Got it. Picturesque perfection out of the hands of Ryan Osgar. That's just as good as it gets. Every throw. First, the reset out into the open space. The leading pass to Osgar with room to run onto it and see Yacht go into the deep space. Look at all that room. And then he steps across, opens up the door, sends the backhand to Yacht. No fear on that one. Starting from a shallow position like that after the long up line makes this easy. Even for a great thrower like Ryan Osgar, he hasn't been in the rhythm so far this game. A couple of misses. They've been hesitant to throw the deep ball. But that one, that's like you have to throw that. There's just no way you're looking that one off. Think about how many times over the course of their lives in practice from college to club to pro that Yacht has caught a deep ball from Ryan Osgar. Thousands, if not tens of thousands of repetitions for those guys. I remember them coming onto the scene winning a college championship. And that was for the University of Minnesota. And we're here in Egan, not far from the Golden Gophers campus. Drop from Lindsley on the under and wow, that's a nifty throw underneath the mark by Ben Katz. And we got contact. Fortin will take the free 10. There's a lot of time and we've seen Salt Lake slice a six goal gap in half but goodness this also feels a little bit like championship point doesn't it. Yeah. Their defense is just incredible. I mean there's just we've said it so many times in so many ways and all of these players another contact call call as Brownlee will take it to the brink of the end zone. I'll tell you what though the Salt Lake end zone defense. They've been doing a good job of double teaming Jeff Babbitt in a lot of cases. They they're aware that he's going to be their main goal scorer and trying to force them to go through someone else and they get the goal line stand. McKay Jorgensen smacks it out of bounds on a rare error from Ben Katz. McKay Jorgensen Ben Katz to Ben Katz. He flashed out of the lane. Katz thought he had the easy score came back in got the block. That's a great way to put it Charlie. So close to being down six. Can Salt Lake get back within four and make it feel doable? Even if it's a Herculean mountain to climb. Yikes. Brett and Tan just got his second hand block of the game. His anticipation on the mark has been awesome today. Different. Tan from Katz in the middle. Babbitt unable to sprawl and keep possession alive though for New York. And a quick pick up and Huck. Canole looking for Jaime. He's got him. Two and a half minutes off the clock. Empire had multiple chances to break and yet Salt Lake hold to keep it within four. Pretty messy point starts off with a turnover for Grant Lindsley and then after that great end zone defense Salt Lake gets it back. Brett Tan the monster. Everybody in the East Coast could tell you he was good and now we're just seeing how good and that's a startling drop from Jeff Babbitt. We're used to him being the most secure of hands even on a difficult catch like that one. It's been automatic and Tan maybe thinking about the turnover gets beat deep. Elijah Jaime able to get some space in the end zone and keep Salt Lake within shouting distance. And I think when Jaime got hand blocked, he felt a little stranded by some of his cutters, and that's what he and Miller were talking about there. Salt Lake's got the D line back on the field. Can they fluster this Empire offense? Known for its excellence. Deep ball for Jack Williams. Osgar again with a gorgeous Majestic missile and yacht finishes it off.
That big three, as good as any trio in the sport right now. They just create space for Ryan Osgar to get it on that forehand sideline, and he turns around and he will just kill you every time. Another beautiful huck sets up the dishy pass. New York up by five, 344 to go in the third. My first few years of college, I threw every single day. Of course you want to be a champion. Of course you want to be working towards winning titles. Be happy, but never satisfied. Better than ever. Back at TCO Stadium, this practice facility for the Vikings has been a fantastic location for the AUDL's 12th championship weekend in the mid-upper 60s tonight, much cooler than yesterday. And yes, this is just the 11th AUDL championship game, but championship weekend number 12 to keep it uh, consistent through the years. An honor to be on the call of the championship game for the ninth time. I'm Evan Leffler with Charlie Eisenhood and Brian Jones. Our entire fantastic crew led by Luke Johnson as Jordan Kerr gets bumped by Antoine Davis in a five goal game here late in the third. Joel Clinton out there on the O line. It looks like for maybe the rest of the game they figured out he has some magic. Able to stretch the field in a different way for the Salt Lake team. Bryce Merrill did say to me before the game with the media timeouts, the commercial breaks, that's one extra kill line per quarter that you can throw out there. Trying to take advantage of that extra rest you get. Lindsley to Jaime for the score. Great play by Jaime. Staying with it. Concentration. Salt Lake offense doing enough to keep them in the game. A couple dangerous passes. But look at him go sideline to sideline. He's got that energy, that motor. You love him have players like that in your O-line that just keep going, just keep creating space. So comes across, has to make the outstretched grab, and then sees that he needs to provide another option, and then Lindsley makes him reach out with that right arm once again. And this is a tough part here for Salt Lake as they're changing up their defensive strategy with a roller pole, because in this direction, New York has been successful hucking. It's a lot easier to huck against this side of the field. The discs don't hang. Ryan Oscar has figured it out. It's really tough to keep New York at bay for more than three points using the same strategy, and now they're switching it up. John Lithio has become the go-to guy to get the disc off the sideline initially for New York, using his length and wingspan and his strong hammer. Well, they need to make somebody other than Ryan Osgar beat them. Very close to a block in the backfield. Braden Eberhard sets the mark. Chartok throws around it for Weinberg. And that's clearly a bump from Ben Hoffman. Clock continues to tick. Final 95 seconds of this third quarter. Salt Lake will receive to begin the fourth. The defense by Moonga on Williams. We get a whistle. It's a contact call against the shred. A lot of physicality right now from the shred defense. They're they're bumping cutters and bumping on the mark. Williams push pass to Weinberg. Why not? Well, we're starting to see the Empire offense look like its usual self after a very clunky second quarter. They've been patient. They've taken the deep shots. That's opened up the underneath space. Go! 
Ryan Osgar has been fantastic in this second half. Doesn't have to do too much on this point. A little push pass from Jack Williams. This is such a smart play. You don't have to make any pivots or change your grip. You can just pop it out there when you got a cutter that open. All those little dishes and passes. You need to have them these days because the windows are tight. They're only open for a second. You don't want to waste an open chance to score a goal. There's Jack patience to a point. Williams did not have an assist in the first half, and he's now the game's leader with three assists in this third quarter. He's also the AUDL's all-time leader with 64 assists in his 18 career playoff games, including tonight. Miscommunication there between Duna Vile and Lindsley, and it's another break chance here for the Empire D-line. Marquez Brownlee on the sideline, and he got hand blocked, and Katz caught it anyway. May have been a foul on Jorgis, and if not for the reception. Fortin for Randolph with a tough catch. He wants contact. It would be huge for the shred to keep the Empire off the board here at the end of the quarter. Randolph with 10 seconds. Katz now with six. Randolph with four. Hammer to the end zone, Jeff Babbitt. There was contact, and it's ruled a goal. We'll see if they add time, or if Babbitt did it at the end of the third quarter, again at championship weekend. Either way, Empire back up by six. What an end to the quarter, and of course it had to be Jeff Babbitt. It may not have been a signature sky, but he still get us open in the end zone, comes up with the grab, strip ruled by the officials. And New York back to their tie for their largest lead of the game with six. That is the end of the quarter. Rule to strip. Jeff Babbitt with his third goal here in the final, his ninth goal of the weekend. It's a six goal lead for New York as we head to the fourth. in front 15-9 as we head to the fourth and Ryan Osgar has dialed in the deep ball for the Empire offense in the second half. Well after a second quarter in which this O-line had four turnovers they went turnover free they took a timeout on the first point and then they said you know what let's get the ball to Ryan Osgar and let him throw it deep and that's exactly what they did they got some really easy scores and they recreated the separation with Salt Lake opening the lead back up to six Perfect O-line performance in the third. It's just so hard to keep them at bay. It really is. It's just against an excellent offense. You can only do so much for so long with the same strategy before they figure it out, and especially these top superstar players. That's why they're in contention for being MVP of the league every year. Some wild symmetry in terms of Jeff Babbitt, end of third quarter buzzer beaters, 2019 against Dallas. He caught a long shot from Harper Garvey as Antoine Davis may have just clinched the championship weekend MVP award with that block in the end zone. As good as Babbitt has been throughout the season, throughout the weekend, Davis has been the dictator for the defense. Contact on the mark. Of course, Jeff Babbitt had a uh, end of third quarter goal when he skied Jason Valley of Chicago is with one second left so technically not a buzzer beater last year but he scores again to start the fourth quarter and the Empire have their largest lead of the night with 11.03 to go New York can taste their third championship.
Fourth goal for Jeff Babbitt, but look at Antoine Davis, the speed. Kerr doesn't even expect him to be there. He just keeps getting blocks and causing problems for Jordan Kerr. I mean, he's had a great weekend. Jeff Babbitt's had an incredible weekend despite only playing one half yesterday. Monster in the end zone. And then Bretton Tan today. It's been electric. It's hard to choose an MVP for New York. A lot of great players. The offense hasn't been perfect. We just talked about Oscar opening up in the third quarter, and he certainly delivered. And now with a seven-point lead, it seems like you can really kick off the discussion of who is going to be that championship weekend MVP. Charlie Hoppus, the co-head coach of this New York team, talked at the press conference before the semifinals about how repeating has been a different challenge Yet the disease of me that Pat Riley coined in the quest to repeat the you know the quest to get everybody to sacrifice a little bit that that hasn't been a big issue for this Empire team they just continue to get hungry they've gotten deeper more dominant they practice so hard they have such a passion for pursuing greatness. And here they are again on the brink of history trying to become the first AUDL team ever to win three titles and they are closing in Oliver Chartok gets on the board here in the final. Well the wheels are starting to come off for Salt Lake. I think they probably knew at the end of the third quarter failing to get a hold which would have kept them within four coming into this fourth quarter. Instead they give up the break they go down six and then two back-to-back -back mistakes and New York makes them pay. Eight goal lead for the Empire. And he's starting to see the look of uh, maybe giving up a little bit from Salt Lake. You can understand it. It's just so hard because this New York team can shatter your confidence. Everything that you normally are able to do. We take a look at the brothers. Chartok, Oliver Chartok, we, we talked about it yesterday. He's just improved so much. They keep getting new performances, new people coming up through and doing more year after year for the Empire. Bretton Tan, the offseason addition, and Oliver Chartok upping his game. Ethan Fortin was a starting O-line player for other teams. Clutton shooting it deep now, and it never had a chance. I think New York saying it went out of bounds well back up the field and that they should get good starting field position. Cats will pick up marked by Weinberg. Ethan Fortin. Guarded by Gene LaRue. Those guys were teammates in Boston a couple years ago. Now Randolph. And John Randolph just continues to be an anchor. An absolute rock for this New York D-line after a turn. So I'm at a big acrobatic block early in the game yesterday against Austin that helped turn the tide. And there's no question about it. The MVP is going to come from this D-line. Because over and over again, this Empire D-line has delivered. How about Ben Katz? Another moment for this guy with all he's been through. Dealing with thyroid cancer over the past Let's several up, years. Boy. Continuing to play at the highest level. An example for anyone who's facing adversity. Nine breaks on 14 chances for the Empire. And aside from a little speed bump in the second quarter for their offensive line, this has been a one-sided affair. Just you're running out of ways to say it. You really are. The greatness personified. The depth. The ability to run other teams off the field to make it look like they don't even belong in the same sport. We saw it yesterday. And this is a Salt Lake team that beat every other team they played this year other than New York. Here's Barbara Stevens. She and her husband Paul, their son Matt taken over this team about four or five years ago now and have just basically treated it as 
with, with utmost professionalism in terms of building a powerhouse program. Salt Lake not wasting time. Chad Jorgensen accelerating for the score. Look at the wheels on Chad Jorgensen. Be hard to out throw him. Jorgensen connection, Luke and Chad. They they know each other's speed. They've calibrated that throw through many a backyard games. Staying focused. Even down big here in the fourth. Great shot from Luke to Chad. They played hard. The D line showed up for Salt Lake in a lot of ways. And they've kept going. Roller pole trying to mix it up again. Empire are in no particular hurry. It's been one of those things about the Empire offense throughout this incredible run as they close in on their 30th consecutive victory. Their ability to play at any pace in any conditions. Tranquil. Or hurricane. I mean literally their season began in absolutely brutal conditions. They weather the storm against Philly as we see McKay Jorgensen get his hands in the backfield for a block. The Salt Lake shred not giving up. Weinberg airs it out. It's intercepted by his distant cousin Charles. Two years ago. The season ended for them in bitter defeat against Carolina. And then since then, it's just never been in doubt. With the exception of a few close games against D.C., their regional rival, their division rival. Only a couple games in their streak where they even trailing at halftime. And it did take, if you remember, an all-time performance from the Flyers on September 11th, 2021 in D.C. for Mike Denardis' Flyers team to get that championship, which was so satisfying for them with all the heartbreak they had endured through the years. Of course, they had lost a pair of double overtime games to New York previously. Ryan, one that you were on the sidelines for, coach in New York. This Empire team is just when they've been down they have found a way to battle back and dig out of trouble. I mean even yesterday against Austin down two nothing they were undeterred. And they haven't been down two nothing too often. Oh this is going to go down as. Maybe the best back to back championship weekend performance. From a team in AUDL history they're I mean, going to become the first team since the. 2014 2015 spiders to go back to back. And they're already celebrating in the sideline and this is keep away offense here. This is run out the clock. This is we have you where we want you. This point began with eight minutes 13 seconds remaining in the fourth and we're now under five minutes. Jonathan Monforti coming from the sideline to give a message to Moonga and Blake Grundy the head official waves his hands to stop the clock to let the officials sort this out. The New York team that in 2017 missed the playoffs entirely in 2018 they were struggling. I think they were four and five through their first nine games before rallying back to make championship weekend when they beat Toronto for the first time. Ben Yacht. Accelerates and throws a souvenir into his hometown stands. The New York fans. Media time. 
are ready to celebrate. The Yacht family in particular enjoying a memorable championship weekend. The New York Empire won their first title in 2019. They won their second last year in Madison. And they are four minutes and 19 seconds away from making it three championships in four years. A nine goal lead for New York after a 10 goal win over Austin yesterday. A lot of talk about how this might be the best AUDL team ever. Their level of domination is truly unprecedented. I've, I haven't seen anything like this. You know, last year they beat Carolina by six. They beat Chicago by eight. And then they just come out here and completely obliterate the Austin Soul and the Salt Lake Shred. Jordan Kerr just touched the disc, which hasn't happened all that often tonight for Salt Lake's offense. A guy that they play through all season long has no assists and no goals in this game and that's a tribute to the guy who's been primarily matched up with him. The Ant likely MVP of championship weekend Antoine Davis. Yeah he has been fantastic coming up with blocks but also just shutting down Jordan Kerr and he put Kyle Henke in jail yesterday just the same to take him completely out of the game. Yeah, Henke had one goal one block didn't do a whole uh, one goal one assist I should say didn't do a lot. In Austin semifinal effort against the Empire. Pretty good dump defense there. Kerr runs into a double team, gets it back from Miller. And great transformation this season by Antoine Davis. Just uh, not feeling super healthy to start the season. A floater goes over Lindsley, and Ryan Drost adds to his total. It's his second block of the night, his fourth of the weekend. He had a great game against Christian Boxley in the middle of the regular season against D.C. And since then, he has been on a tear. It's hard. He's played a lot of offense in his early in his career. He's an offensive star, scoring deep. Played that role for Atlanta before becoming for New York and has just figured it out. Physically dominant, being able to read the play. New York in no particular hurry, nor do they have to be. This Empire team with a rare drop on a break chance. And New York had 15 breaks yesterday. They've got nine more tonight. Not this time, though, as Duna Bile. Makes it back to an eight-goal game. Just four turnovers in the second half for New York. It's really been quite the performance. Jace Dunabile, one of the brightest stars on this Salt Lake team this season. A name to watch moving forward for this super young team that's got a bright future. A really bright future. And you have to take these lumps. You're going up, going up against a great team. You can think you're prepared until you feel the buzzsaw come at you and you just face that pressure that you haven't seen all season long. You know for them they gain that confidence we talked about it in the regular season. They play a close game. They felt like they missed out on some chances and at their home crowd. But when New York's ready. It's very tough. They had the same number of break chances as the Empire did in that mid July matchup at Zion's Bank Stadium. But they were not as efficient. And New York has clearly been the more efficient team tonight in every way. Jumped out 4 0 in the opening minutes as Moonga gets another block. I mean, he doesn't quit. He's huh. got, I love his defense so far. He's going to continue to grow. Just 23 years old. Chad Jorgensen wanted to send it to Nathan Huff. 
Hey, I mean, this Salt Lake team took the field tonight with only three guys of their active 20 that were above the age of 28. Ten of their top 20 are 25 and under. Bruce Meyer Bailey rips down the interception with under a minute to go now. Sloppiest point of the day here at 1911 with 40 seconds left in our 2023 season. 144 regular season games, 10 playoff games before today. This game number 155, the final. Will Selfridge, another guy with a very bright future. But that's to talk about down the road. The present belongs to the New York Empire as they lead 19-12 with 30 seconds left. My first few years of college, I threw every single day. Of course you want to be a champion. Of course you want to be working towards winning titles. Be happy, but never satisfied. than ever. Just 30 seconds left in the 2023 AUDL season. And the New York Empire fell behind 2-0 in the semifinal against the Austin Soul and dominated virtually every point since. A 27-17 win yesterday. And today, a 4-0 lead mushroomed into a nine-goal second-half lead. Mike and Ryan Dross playing some catch in the O-line, a rare sight to see after all their years on D-line. This New York franchise has redefined excellence. And for the third time in four years, the New York Empire are AUDL champions. The dynasty continues for New York. to wire for two straight seasons. The Toronto Rush from 2013 and 2014. Well, you could say they have company, but they may have clearly been surpassed by this juggernaut team. A 19 to 12 win for New York. Salt Lake finishes its season 13 and two with both losses to the Empire. And this New York team, easily in the conversation for greatest of all time. And Antoine Davis, one of the great defensive lockdown weekends we have seen from anybody in the history of this league. He was just unbelievable over the second half of the season. And this weekend, putting the clamps on two of the league's best. Yesterday, shutting down Kyle Henke. Today, just blanketing Jordan Kerr and taking him out of the offense, causing problems from the jump. They go up big early, and Davis with multiple blocks. Back-to-back -back perfect seasons. And New York will head into 2024 riding a 30-game winning streak. Obviously, they're talented. Obviously, they're committed. They're smart. They've got great leadership, buy-in. Incredible. The New York Empire are AUDL champions again. 19 to 12 over Salt Lake. We'll be back and chat with the MVP and present the trophy after this.
The celebration is underway here at TCO Stadium as the New York Empire have won the AUDL championship for the third time in the last four years. And we are joined by the championship weekend MVP presented by Manscaped. Antoine Davis, congratulations to you and your team. What has it been like to be a part of this team? 30 consecutive wins and another championship. How does it feel? Honestly, it's a dream come true. Um, when I first started my time with this team, um, I knew I was stepping into greatness, and I did everything in my power to um, be, just be a part of it, really. Five blocks on the weekend for you, Antoine. You shut down Kyle Hankey. You shut down Jordan Kerr. How did you and the D-line dominate the way that you did this weekend? Honestly, the word we've been passing around is trust. We just really believe in even if we're making the wrong decisions, we're willing to back up our teammates no matter what. So we'll um, just really trust um, our actions and uh, play off each other. And that has just really built um, just a formidable defense. Spent a lot of years in this league being an offensive force. And then you come to this team and you play a defensive role. And the last six weeks, you've been in an absolute tear. What has been the change that has put you in this position to be the championship weekend MVP with this many blocks, shutting people down? Um, really just, I literally get to practice against the number one offense every single Wednesday, sometimes on the weekends, and iron sharpens iron. So I was committed to getting better, and I was leaning on other people around me to point out stuff I needed to work on, and I took those to heart, and luckily I showed today. Appreciate the deflection, all the teammates. Can you share some of what your internal strategy was to try and handle Kyle Henke and Jordan Kerr the past couple days? Um, like I said yesterday, I was a uh, I'm a big visualizer, so I just already in my mind I already have played this game, and I played it probably at least ten times in my head, and so th th today was my eleventh. Well, Antoine, congratulations on an incredible weekend and, and season and, and dynasty. I mean, does this feel like a dynasty that's going to keep on rolling? Oh, yeah. Yeah. As long as I'm on the field. Yeah, for sure. H how does the hunger maintain itself after you win? Um, we're trying to just make history. Um, we know the the minimum was winning the championship and we wanted to make a statement this week of we didn't. This is not a fluke at all. We're not. Um, just a team of individuals. We're just a great team, and we showed that this weekend. Yeah. Most dominant playoff performance in AUDL history, both for you and your team. Congrats. Go enjoy it. Go celebrate. We'll see you down the road. Thanks so much, Thank Antoine. Thank you. That's our Manscaped Championship Weekend MVP. We are just about ready for the presentation of the AUDL trophy. Let's toss it down to the commissioner of the American Ultimate Disc League, Steve Hall. All right, fans, on behalf of the entire AUDL, we would like to thank Viking Lakes for hosting the 2023 championship weekend at TCO Stadium. We would also like to thank all of our partners for supporting the AUDL throughout the season. And most importantly, we want to acknowledge our amazing fans around the world. The ultimate community is truly a special group and we look forward to growing the sport for many years to come. First, what an incredible season for the Salt Lake Shred. Well done on the tremendous effort this weekend and success you've had in the 2023 season. Please give them a big round of applause. Well done. But today belongs to the New York Empire. Absolutely incredible. 30 wins in a row, tying the all-time league record, back-to-back -back championships, and three of the last four. The accolades are endless. So congratulations to all the players, coaches, staff, and owners. We would like to present to you a $20,000 check and the 2023 AUDL Championship Trophy. Please give them a round of applause.
accepting the championship trophy as this was truly a team victory. I mean, literally yesterday, every single player on the team either contributed with a goal, an assist, or a block, and we talk about how those stats don't always mean a lot, but when everybody is contributing, it's just an unbelievable thing. And, and I was chatting with Charlie Hoppus, the co-head coach before the game. He wishes that they could have gotten players 21 through 30 in the game yesterday when they had a double-digit lead, because it would have made a difference. This is a team that's even deeper than 20. But their 20 is clearly at a different level than anybody else. Uh, I think we saw them play their best ultimate of the entire season this weekend. I mean, sure, the O-line had some chop, but the D-line put them in such a great position that it didn't matter. And, uh, I mean, I just don't think we've seen dominant defense like this at a championship weekend in quite some time. It's just, what more can you say? All the performances, Brett and Tan, Antoine Davis getting the championship weekend MVP, Jeff Babbitt playing one half and getting eight goals on no completions. Just all the performances stood out, every that, single one of them. Babbitt had 10 goals on 17 points played this weekend. That's astonishing. And, and you just think about, I mean, Jack Williams, championship weekend MVP last year, and Ryan Osgar and Ben Yacht have won actual regular season MVPs. And yet, I mean, it's Antoine Davis that shines. It's John Randolph that was certainly an MVP candidate as well. Ryan Drost in his incredible endurance and keeping it up in this league with his brother Mike going over 200 blocks just so many different pieces making big plays they're a tough team to beat well that's the thing about this Empire franchise you know they've built from the ground up you've got the Dross brothers who've been around since nearly the beginning and they're still a part of this team and, and it was kind of this you know faceless army back in the day of guys who were grinding it out and you know they could never get past toronto this juggernaut team from the early years of the audl and they finally were able to get past them and then they got to championship weekend and they took their lumps and they, they finally got guy. to the top brian jones taking them to the title in 2019 and wow and back-to-back -back yeah, championships and it feels like it's fine. dynasty time yeah, it was a fun year in 2019 we felt pretty confident in ourselves but i can tell you this is another level i mean there's no role too small for someone to fill and to excel at oliver tartok just elevates his game so many of the other players you talked about the bench that they have the depth it's just it feels like it keeps getting better and they make it seem so easy because of everything they have set up so the question is, as we move towards 2024 and start thinking about the upcoming future, how does the rest of the league raise its collective level to meet what New York's putting out there? Because dynasties are awesome. Dynasties show you what th the ceiling of greatness can be, but everybody now needs to pursue it. And that's going to be the thought for the Salt Lake Shred, the Colorado Summit, the D.C. Breeze, the Flyers, the Hustle, everybody across this league. Yeah, I mean, it starts right now, to be honest. you got to start thinking about next season right now. Who are you going to try to bring into your team? you got to start doing that free agency hunt. Because I, I think part of the problem is that New York's talent level is just above everybody else's. It's not just about the commitment to practicing, the commitment to professionalism. They also just have better players than the other teams. So other teams are going to have to try to match what this franchise has done. And it's also the right talent, right? They're not trying to do too much with it. They're unselfish from top to bottom. And look at them making a switch. Yacht and Babbitt trading places on the O and D lines for this championship weekend. And it, it almost looks better. Jeff Babbitt, John Lithio going out right before the game against D.C. being ruled inactive, and it doesn't matter. Jack Williams gets injured for a moment. John Randolph comes to the O-line. And, and that's, that's a great point because that was the O-line being special and getting them a win against arguably the second-best team in the league to get here to championship weekend. And then the D-line was special. And their ability to win in both ways is what's made them so special. Well, gentlemen, it's been a privilege to be with you for another season of the American Ultimate Disc League. Looking forward to the future and looking forward to see who can challenge this Empire team in the years ahead. Was this the last time we'll see Mike and Ryan Drost? I, I hope they'll be back. They just turned 34. They clearly still can play. These are some of the veteran D-liners. And wow, what a season it has been.
across the league. The Salt Lake Shred raised their game this year, but it was not enough tonight. The New York Empire with a 10 goal win yesterday, a seven goal win today in the playoffs. They outscored DC, Austin, and Salt Lake 70 to 48. And we head into 2024 with the Empire looking to continue their dynasty. So many thank yous all around the league, all the way to the top with Steve Hall and Tim DeVille, Rob Lloyd and others. Luke Johnson, Ani Benson, our entire broadcast crew, Brian Jones, Charlie Eisenhood, I'm Evan Leppler. Thanks for being with us all season long. AUDL post-game coverage, AUDL Facebook page, AUDL TV. See you later, everybody.